So Coach Rivera kind of called out William Jackson III without necessarily calling out William Jackson III. And I'm talking about his uh, little uh, press conference after practice yesterday. Um, and if any of you guys didn't get a chance to catch his press conference, just uh, go on YouTube and, and watch it. You'll see what I'm talking about. Um, so... In his press conference, it was asked about the defense and, you know, things about uh, the communication and or the lack thereof. And he was asked about, you know, when things are, you know, when the communication breaks down, is it a lack of, is it a lack of effort, is it a lack of, um, you know, are they not getting it, so to speak? I mean, in so many words. And um, anyway, Ron Rivera, you know, went on to give props to many of the uh, guys on defense, called them out by name. And Jamin Davis was actually one of the, the players that he said um, played very well last week, which I was, I was happy to hear. I just came out with a video about how, you know, it felt like that Jamin Davis kept getting called out as not playing very well. Mm. Because, oh, whoops, because adulting is hard. Ouch, and that is hot. Um, and so it was very, it was very nice to hear Ron Rivera speak highly about Jamin Davis. I think... Uh, maybe Jamin Davis realizes that he jumped the gun on that IG post, which is the reason why he took it down. Um, but he spoke highly about him, spoke highly, of course, about uh, a lot of the guys up front, uh, Jonathan Allen, Ron Payne, um, you know, Montez Sweat, um, Smith Williams, guys like that. Uh, Definitely was so happy. He he really had a smile on his face talking about Cameron Curl, about how great it was to see him back in practice and how he just elevates everybody else. I, I'm excited to see him back, hopefully, in the lineup this Sunday because we're going to definitely need him in that secondary. Um, spoke highly about uh, Kendall Fuller and, uh, you know, spoke highly about McCain, Bobby McCain. And then... He's, you know, um, he kind of stopped right there. <laughs> he stopped right there, and then he jumped into, that's when he started jumping into the communication and not giving up big plays and those chunk plays and things like that. And we all knew at that point who he was talking about. And... <clears throat> It doesn't take a uh, it doesn't take a investigator or, or a rocket scientist to, to figure out it was William Jackson the third that Ron Rivera was talking about without actually naming his name and I mean you know you, you have to you have to wonder how much patience does uh, Jack Del Rio and Ron Rivera have with William Jackson, are they at some point going to have to either shift him to another position or are they going to have to just flat out bench him? Maybe just reduce the the number of packages that he is featured in and give another corner a chance. Um, now we can also say, I don't know if he necessarily, I don't remember him saying anything about Benjamin St. Juice, so maybe he was calling out Benjamin St. Juice, but I would probably say to that that, you know, Juice, he's in his second year, he's still learning, um, and, I mean, you paid a lot of money to out to, um, I mean, probably not a huge amount, but you, you paid a decent amount of money for um, William Jackson III, so you expect him to come in and be able to, you know, perform well, and quite frankly, 
I don't think he has. Now, that was the thing the reporters did spot on ask Ron, did it look like that William Jackson III had looked more comfortable in the defense in his second year? And Ron didn't answer that directly. He didn't say, oh, yes, I think he does. That's when he kind of gave the political answer and he jumped into the answer of, you know, we got to stop giving up chunk play. So that told you right there, Ron doesn't think that William Jackson III is comfortable in this defense. I don't think he is. I don't think that William Jackson has been comfortable in this defense. I think he, every now and then he's going to make some good plays in some certain situations, but he has gotten burnt so many times, and then other times he has just he has, uh, tried to stop big plays by just outright holding the receiver or committing pass interference calls, which doesn't really do us any good because that's going to be guaranteed, you know, uh, big chunks gained at, with that. So it feels like that he is just struggling. He is really struggling. And I'm not sure if this defense is cut out for William Jackson III. Now, some fans uh, in my other video were saying that they feel like it's the scheme and it's not necessarily the players. They feel like the scheme is too difficult. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe there is some truth to that. Maybe... The, the scheme is so, there's so much to the scheme that maybe Jack Del Rio and company needs to look at the scheme and they need to simplify it a little bit more, break it down and just, you know, make it a little bit more bite-sized for these guys to be able to be a little more successful. I wouldn't be opposed to that. You know, sometimes I think you can scheme yourself to, to death to, to the point to where it just makes it too difficult. You know, you're trying to you're trying to disguise so many things. You're trying to be so intricate intricate in how fancy you are with your scheme that uh, you you have to be a rocket science scientist in order to be able to understand your role in it. And I think sometimes you get corners you get these guys playing in the secondary that they're used to playing in schemes where you know yes they're going to do their job but they're also free to kind of freelance a little bit so that they're free to also recognize and understand if the coverage is not going to be enough <clears throat> You know, like maybe say in the middle that they're able to kind of rotate and get over there to help out before the ball gets there. And maybe in this scheme, they're just not able to do that. And so it looks like that they're constantly out of position because they're trying to help. Maybe that's what's happening. I don't know. And then, and then you get the coaches who are saying that these guys are constantly out of position and maybe it's it's instinct to them, you know, they're wanting to, to help, and then they feel like that, I don't know, maybe it's just that, like the coaches say, there's one or two players that are not doing their jobs, and because of that, it messes up the entire scheme. And, you know... So, yeah, I can see it from both sides. You know, if one guy is not going to do his job and it messes up the entire thing, then, you know, do we need to have such a scheme installed that, you know, it, it's going to, you know, it relies on everybody to do everything exactly right. But then again... You know, are we giving these guys too much leadway? I mean, they're professionals, so they should be able to do their job. So there, there's two ways to look at that, right? It just depends on which camp you're in. Speaking of that, let me know which camp you are in in the comment section. Uh, let's continue this, this conversation. Is it the scheme? Is it the players? But it does seem like that 
William Jackson III continues to get called out. And I think he's on the hot seat. I really do. Um, and I, I would just about bet that most fans are probably would pretty much agree with me on that. Honestly, folks, that's it for this video. Please like, share, comment on this video. Please subscribe to this channel. When you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that notification button so you'll know when I release another video. There's other ways to support this channel, and you can do so by doing this. Seem to get out.